Welcome. Welcome into the sanctuary of University Lutheran Church Lutheran Campus Ministry here at Arizona State University in Tempe, Arizona. We are so happy to have you join us for this worship service today. I'm Pastor Gary McCluskey, the pastor of University Lutheran Church and Lutheran Campus Ministry here. And today we have a guest preacher and the guest preacher's name is Julie Garish. Julie is an alum of our campus ministry program having graduated from Arizona State a few years ago. She is now a third year uh, seminarian about to begin her third year at Pacific Lutheran Theological Seminary in Berkeley, California. We're so happy to have Julie with us uh, to be able to bring the good news to us today to this meeting. Our worship for this 10th Sunday after Pentecost begins. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy, amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It's hard to believe there's enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there's always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Come and gather beneath the tree of life. Come and gather beneath the tree of life. Root of wisdom, fruit of peace, fruit of healing and release. Come and gather.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is 1 Kings 19, 4 through 8. Elijah went down a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Eat. He looked, and at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in with strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. Here ends the first reading. Psalm 34, 1 through 8. I will bless the Lord at all times and with the praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord, let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord, let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see, the Lord is good, happy are they who take refuge in God. Here ends the psalm. The second reading is Ephesians 4, 25 and 5, 2. So then putting away all falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down over your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing rather than let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is a need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you are marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from all you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering, sacrifice to God. Here ends the second reading. Gospel today is from John 6, 35, 41 through 51. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven. Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by God. 
Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from the one who is creator, Christ, and spirit. I am grateful to be able to preach at ULC this Sunday, and I realize it's a great honor to be able to share my voice with you all. I started here as a freshman elementary education student in 2012, and here I am in 2021 preaching a sermon and working on my seminary degree. So thank you for supporting me. When I read the First Kings passage for this week, I was really curious about what a broom tree is and what its significance is. A broom tree is what Elijah sits under. It's a shrub-like tree similar to a juniper tree that grows in a desert wilderness. A broom tree has roots that go deep into the soil of the desert to the place where the water is. When the prophet Elijah was fleeing from the ones who wanted to kill him, but to be fair, he had just killed prophets from their community, um, he sat under the broom tree and waited to die. Elijah said to God, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. And this part made me laugh. Because are any of us better than our ancestors? I know I, I really look up to, you know, a lot of my ancestors and, and is it ever the point of life to be better than anyone or anything? Is that even possible? I, I don't know. Either way, Elijah sits and he waits to die and he's provided for by an angel sent from the Lord. When I read here about the angel who brought Elijah food, I remembered the verse from Hebrews 13, 2 that says we sometimes provide hospitality for angels unaware. And I wonder if it ever works a different way where the one providing hospitality is an angel in the form of someone living nearby being an angel in that moment. I don't know the rules of God or angels, but I do know that sometimes my mom has been a very immediate angel providing me with food and words of encouragement. Sometimes the janitor at the hospital has been an angel when I'm working on a late night shift. And sometimes the cashier in the cafeteria has been an angel. There are so many angels, and I'm sure many of you have been an angel to someone in need. Anyway, I wondered if the angel God sent to Elijah was someone who lived close to that wilderness area where Elijah had given up on running away. Working as a hospital chaplain this summer, I've met and spoke with many different people, and I've learned that we don't need to be written or coded as prophets to go through all the difficult moments that prophets like Elijah went through. Everyone has a story. Everyone has many stories. And it makes me wonder about you, the ones who are listening to this sermon. Have you had moments where you felt like you were wandering in the wilderness? I'm asking this as a question, but I know that each of you has had a time when you felt lost or sad, and I know I have. I know as a culture, we've been going through the wilderness wandering of COVID, and now the Delta variant is sweeping through the population and health feels uncertain again. And I wonder who listening to this is going through a wilderness wandering right now and who just might need some water, rest, a word of care from an angel 
and some homemade cake. Personally, I would enjoy an angel telling me to rest and eat cake. I also noticed that the tree Elijah sits under, a broom tree, may be the same kind of shrub Hagar put Ishmael under when she didn't want to watch her baby's death. After she'd already fled her home due to oppression. And with both Elijah and Hagar, when they let go and gave up control, they were saved and provided for. I know we have that phrase of let go and let God, but I think that is one of the hardest things for me to do, to let go of control. Hagar and Elijah were both on the brink of death and they let go of control. Another question I have about the passage, um, which I know I have asked in seminary, uh, but never felt a satisfactory answer for, is why do the Bible writers use the number 40 so often? Like 40 days and 40 nights. Elijah lives for 30, 40 days and 40 nights off the bread and cake from the angel in his time of crisis. I guess the Bible writers want to prove a point, maybe, that God would provide. However, the 40 days that Elijah lived off the cake and water is not as much as Jesus offers the listeners later in John's Gospel passage. I find it so interesting that today we have a passage of Elijah being provided food and water in the wilderness, and we also have our Gospel where Jesus says, your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. But after reading the first Kings passage, I'm thinking, okay, Jesus, but I'm trying to preach about the passage on how amazing God's provision to Elijah in the desert was. And then you have to kind of one-up that story by being the bread from heaven and being way better than the sustenance of the before times. But anyways, however the words or the passages speak to you today, I hope you stay safe out in the very present hot desert climate as it's drier lately and the sun is beating down. If you'd like to see something like a broom tree, we have similar plants, juniper trees in Arizona. And I wanna say thank you for providing me with hospitality and letting me preach a sermon this week. And may God bless you and keep you in their grace. Amen. Oh, uh-huh.
faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. for the Church of Christ in all its diverse forms, for mission developers, new mission starts, and all communities of faith exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the gospel, for congregations facing difficult decisions about their future, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the health and well-being of creation, for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution and all who lack clean water. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those called to positions of authority in our legal system, we pray. For judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice. For corrections officers and prison chaplains, that they would deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertain about the future, for all who mourn the death of a loved one, for all who are sick, especially those whom we now name silently before your presence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this assembly gathered around your table, gathered around electronic devices, we pray. For those among us who bake bread and prepare the vessels for our communion celebration, for those who bring the food from this table to those who are homebound or hospitalized, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these in all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all and also with you. Thank you. 
us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us. Make us be what we receive. Make us be your body for life of the world. Amen. Together we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Again, we're so glad that you could worship with us. And we're so grateful for Julie Garish bringing us the good news of Jesus Christ today in her sermon. Julie is also doing her clinical training right now here in Phoenix at one of our local hospitals. She'll be completing that very shortly and then again return for that third year in seminary. Well, students will be back soon. August 19th, classes begin. We're already signing up. Uh, folks to provide meals for students Sundays and or Wednesdays. If you can help, please contact us with that. Some folks are cooking and bringing food in. Some are paying for food and the students themselves uh, will cook and provide that food then. Uh, also, some uh, will provide gift cards and then the students will even go shop uh, as well as then provide that food. We do ask if it's going to be a gift card that you make it Fry's or Safeway because those are both within a close distance of campus. And we thank you for that. Uh, our worship, Sunday worship will return to 10.30 a.m. on August 22nd. Our first Wednesday student service in person will be 6.30 August 25th. Virtual coffee hours continue first and third Sunday of each month. As always, not only a heartfelt thank you to those of you who gather around these various devices, watching and worshiping with us, sending in your contributions that make this kind of thing possible, but also to all the technical people, worship people and so forth who work so hard each and every week, putting in so many hours to make this possible. We thank you all. You're greatly appreciated. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Thanks be to God.